today I've got some updates for you on the Sapphire Princess and the Caribbean Princess. We also need to talk about what is going on with flooding in Europe and how that is impacting river cruises with a couple of things that maybe you don't know about river cruises when such things happen. We're also going to go through a new travel requirement that Great Britain is implementing, which you need to be aware of if you're going to be going there, and lots more. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Tuesday, it is September 17th of 2024. Let's start at the top with our updates from the ships. First of all, the Caribbean Princess right now is uh, sailing in the Baltic region and um, and uh, by Germany. <laughs> On Sunday evening, the German military had to conduct an emergency medical evacuation for a sick passenger. So I am grateful to the Let's Go family member who let me know that this had to happen and that they were safely able to evacuate that guest. So um, our thoughts and prayers are indeed with that guest and their family. And I think it's wonderful about how everywhere everyone pitches in when someone is sick and needs to be airlifted or whatever they need. Next up, let's talk about the Sapphire Princess for just a minute. The Sapphire Princess this season is sailing in Alaska. At the very beginning of the Alaska season, as she was making her way to Alaska and then that first cruise, um, you might remember that they had a little bit of propulsion trouble at that time, went a lot slower than they were expecting. But also another big change that happened on that ship is in kind of the extended area of the buffet, for a long time had been a Sterling Steakhouse. When you think of Sterling Steakhouse, think Crown Grill, except for it was just located in the extension of the buffet. But they made the big change, and they have changed it to a, a Brazilian steakhouse. It's called Chiriscaria, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And um, we've heard some reviews here and there throughout the Alaska season about that eating venue. But we've got some Let's Go family members on board this week. And I am really grateful for the updates that they are sharing with us on Facebook and in emails from different ones of you. All have commented how absolutely outstanding that uh, Brazilian Steakhouse is. I'm telling you about it so that you can put it on your list of places that you would like to try if you enjoy that kind of cuisine. And also, I think it's really important to note, you know, they start off with changing a venue to a different kind of eating establishment. And I honestly think it takes them a little while to kind of get in their groove with that. I know the more I make a certain dish, the better I get at it. I learn all the little tips and tricks to make it superb. And I think it's the same thing with um, as they're preparing all the meals on board the ship for different eating venues. So it sounds like everything is going spectacularly. And so if you've got any other updates for me on any other dining on the ships, let me know because we all like to stay up to date with that. Next up, let's talk about that new electronic travel authorization that Great Britain is going to start requiring. So we have talked about a couple of different authorizations or uh, ways to keep track of guests as they um, move in and out of different regions of the world. And we are expecting some time to hear when the ETIAS, which is a different type of travel off of authorization, for the EU is going to go into effect. They've teased that a few times. They've had to move the date back for that. And so I'll let you know when I hear anything about that. But for now, we're still waiting for the day that that is going to be a go. Then I also let you know that they are doing that new exit and entry uh, way of keeping track of guests by using um, your face, using your fingerprints in some instances, other than just stamping your passport to keep track of guests as they enter and exit. Well, uh, now Great Britain has come online with what they are going to be requiring if you want to enter Great Britain. Now, um, here's how it's going to work. <laughs> it's a lot like the ETIAS for the um, European Union. They will have a website where you're going to go in fill out the information and submit your payment. It's supposed to cost around $13 and once you receive that authorization it is linked to your passport. So as you enter Great Britain when you present your passport to enter there it is going to automatically um, connect that you have that travel authorization to enter 
okay? So it's a lot like what they're going to be doing with um, the EU, like I mentioned. So you're going to be able to use that to stay in Great Britain for up to six months for tourism, if, you know, just to travel, see things if you want to. If you're going there to work, that's a whole different uh, system that you're going to be required to have to work with. So this is for people going um, for tourism. Um, the reason that Great Britain cites that they are doing this is from 2023 to 2024, they have had an increase of 6.7 million more people visiting Great Britain. And so I get it. Um, I get that they want to keep better track of people. They want to know who is coming and going. Uh, now, when is this going to take effect? It says that the system for it is going to open in November and it is going to be required for entry in April of 2025. So I'll keep you up to date when I hear of the exact date in April that they are going to start that and when I see the system open, okay? So you're going to need to do that even if you're just going to go there to embark on a cruise. If you're going to be entering the Great Britain, <laughs> the Great Britain you're going to need to do that. Alrighty, let's talk about the Sun Princess. The Sun Princess has been in the news a little bit more lately as we have been talking about what's going on with the removal of Park 19. And so I've got a couple of updates for you. First of all, um, I've got some Let's Go family members who are on the Sun Princess right now uh, reporting to me that they're, they hear jackhammer sounds and that up on Park 19, up on that deck, that sport court deck, they the workmen are already working on it. And so we had all kind of um, you know, guessed maybe they'll be doing that on the transatlantic. Sounds like they're already working on it. So send me any reports, send me any pictures that you got, that you get, and I will be delighted to share them with everyone. So clearly that truly is gone and they are going to go ahead and go with what we are more accustomed to having on a princess ship. So the second update I have for you is across the board, clear from people who are going on cruises on the Sun Princess in two weeks um, is the most recent that I have heard, as well as people who are going on the Sun Princess for a very long ways out. Princess is offering them that if they had booked that cruise because they wanted to have that Park 19 experience that no longer exists on the ship, ship, they can have a full refund for their cruise. So in the comments, let me know if you have received one of those offers. Let me know if you're going to accept it. Did you book the Sun Princess just because you wanted to experience Park 19? Um, I personally, um, my guess would be that a lot of people are still going to want to go because there is still so much new to experience on the Sun Princess. That Park 19 would have been cool uh, for people that especially I think that wanted to take children but at the same time, I know that there were some adults that were looking forward to that as well. But like I said, there is still an awful lot of new and really cool things to see on the Sun Princess. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And also, have you received one of those offers? And have you have you accepted it or not? Um, next, we have a Let's Go family member who just got off the Majestic Princess um, on a cruise in Alaska. And I love that she asked this. And whoever she asked, you know, I'll ask how many guests around board and very it seems like I'm being a pain asking this when I ask people this but she asked the right person because they let her know that on her very recent cruise on the Majestic Princess that there were um, 181 elite guests 172 platinum there were 147 ruby guests 497 gold guests uh, and these are loyalty levels by the way uh, gold is what you are when you're on your second princess cruise just for a point of reference first timers there were 1800 and uh, the c total capacity on the ship um, is around 4000 that's if you put in like your third and fourth guests in cabins that are usually double occupancy the regular occupancy occupancy on that ship is 3,440 guests. 80%, um, 80% of the guests traveling had a package. That means they booked the plus package or the premier package. And I thought that was really, really interesting because, you know, we talk about these packages so much and you have to weigh out whether or not you want it. What I really want to know when it comes to the packages, and I would love to hear from you in the comments, of course, put in there if you get a package or not, but also those of you who have not had a package, as we roll into this time where the, the where the new, um, well, the new Wi-Fi was supposed to start on all the ships on August 31st. So let me know how the Wi-Fi is if you don't have a package. I've only sailed on the Love Boat Cruise and I had the plus package that week. So I want to know what the Wi-Fi looks like if you happen to be 
sailing without a package because that's usually how Gordon and I sail and I really need four devices in my life when I travel with Gordon. We each really use two at the same time an awful lot and so um, that's what's on my mind with all of this so let me know what the Wi-Fi has been seeming like which uh, <laughs> without a package I appreciate that. Now, if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, will you please go ahead and hit the subscribe button? And if you appreciate my updates, will you please give this video a thumbs up? It really helps us out, so thank you. Now, river cruising. We talk about river cruising a little bit around here. I think we need to talk about it a lot more. But right now, there is a huge storm that has been hitting Europe for the last week. Uh, six people, um, on the news reports that I have read, six people have perished in that storm. And the countries that are mostly affected are Austria, the Czech Republic, Poland, Romania, and it is coming into Hungary and um, Slovakia. Um, these last couple of days, it is starting to hit there. Along the Danube there, um, um, I've seen pictures that show that they have a lot of sandbags in order to mitigate any of the effects of the flooding of the Danube. So when we think of all that happening, we not only, of course, absolutely first and foremost, pray for the people affected there because there is a lot of devastation, not only along the rivers there, but um, throughout Europe where this storm has hit. So it's a really big deal. Apparently it was a system that came from northern Italy and came up and has impacted that region an awful lot. So we also think of traveling because that's what we talk about around here. And so I thought I would let you know what is going on with the different river cruise lines right now as they face what's going on. And I want to let you know that the river cruise lines are actually quite ingenious as they consider how they are going to still make the river cruises run in spite of what the rivers are doing at the time. Sometimes they have to bus guests when there is no way to have one ship take guests from another to the other ship or anything else they can do, then they will bus you so that you can get to the point where you can get on the riverboat again. Okay, so thought I would put that out there. But um, just to bring you up to date, um, Avalon Waterways right now has two sailings that they say are impacted and they don't really say what they're doing. They say they are communicating with those guests who are impacted by the changes that they're having to make. Um, they are also canceling two future sailings and um Alma Waterways um, said that so far um, the high water levels have caused some inconveniences but they have not had to change any of their itineraries yet and let me tell you it would depend also on where those riverboats are going to be sailing right um, it sounds like right now the greatest trouble is in Vienna where the Danube is right there in Vienna I'll tell you about that a little bit more um, Riviera um, Cruises has also been forced to make some changes a Viking spokesman said that they have not made any changes to their itineraries but that they have a team um, I called I called Viking just to ask and they have a team in Switzerland monitoring the situation is what they've said um, scenic group so scenic owns the um, scenic river boats and emerald uh, Emerald <laughs> River boats, and um, they are getting ready to make sure that they can tag team any of their boats that they need to, is what they talked about. Um, the places I guess that everyone is most worried is Vienna, where it's the worst now, and Budapest, because that will come next. Um, there is our ship right now that is a Swiss uh, river cruise boat, and they are just outside of Vienna there, and they cannot get in to um, disembark in Vienna because apparently the gangway area there that they've got is flooded. So I'll keep you up to date with everything, but that's where we stand with the flooding right now and what is going on um, with river cruises. So let me know if you've got questions about anything below. Let me know if you've got questions about anything that you would think would be helpful for me to cover, and I'm delighted to do that. So I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.